All right. We Hi. are live and up on our Twitch talking about ABCs and 123s of game schooling. Yay. Hey, everybody. Can you hear us? I am now completely paranoid that nobody can hear us all the time. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be. You <laughs> can hear us. And we're live. Yes. Yay. Um, if you can hear us, please say hi in the chat. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions and um, let us know what you're thinking about game schooling. We have been doing these videos now for, I don't know, how many have we done? Four or five? Is this uh, five? This would be, I can tell you, this might be six. One, two, six? three, four, five, six. This is the sixth Whoa, one. Whoa, this is six. Oh, yay. Louis Bob says she can hear us. Yay. yay. Thank you. Um, okay, so today we are doing... This, we're here with uh, Kathleen. I'm Kathleen from Labyrinth Games and Puzzles in Washington, D.C. Um, and we're here with Melissa and Rich. And Rich is back. Yay. Yay. No longer sick. So that's yes. nice. And he didn't have the COVID, so we're good. Yes. We all sit next to him again. Well, he was here last week. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You beat me in election night. Not no, really. we didn't. We Although decided we, we decided it was a tie, but we're not really sure about our math last week. But anyway, tonight, what are we doing, Miss Melissa? Uh, tonight we are talking about games related to art. So that could be things that make you think about art, the things that make you think about colors, and things that make you draw. So all of the above. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Do you like to start with Tango Jr. since you're holding it so lovingly? I about was... You oh. want to do Fangos Jr. first? Uh, do we have Why don't we younger? do color? They're both the same, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Tango's Jr. Tango's Jr. is really, really, really cute and great and wonderful and very thinky. We've got all these. Do we have the yep. physical one? I do. So I have it here. We've got a bunch of Tango's here. And Kathleen very expertly assembled this square <laughs> before the stream started. Um, <laughs> but the cool thing about Tango's Jr., so this is a Tangram puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, Tangram puzzles were created in China. They're known as dissection puzzles. There are seven pieces. Anytime you see a Tangram puzzle, it is defined by these seven pieces. There are two small triangles, a square, a bigger triangle, two large triangles, and a parallelogram. Um, that is critical for a tangram puzzle. And as Rich was saying, um, Tango's Jr. is a kind of a large magnetic version, which I love the magnetic part of it. Um, so you can see here. This is also really awesome because people can take it on trips with them, right. which is pretty fantastic. And the really cool thing is it comes with different puzzles. And like the house. I love the house. Um, and so it's showing children how to make pictures out of shapes. And it so it really works on a lot of math skills, but it's also very, very visual. And it's really great for kids who love to draw or make shapes or things. Um, what have you experienced when you've used it in classrooms and stuff? It's just really cool to take out the, the earlier puzzles, the ones that have lines between them, and see kids react to seeing, oh, if I put these two triangles together like this, it's going to make a house. And um, just, they may not vocalize it that way, but as you go through the puzzles, they get more challenging. There's ones that don't show you where the lines are, so that you have to figure that out for yourself. Um, but like you said, it, it's introducing that idea of, you know, when you see a larger image, you can break it down into smaller parts. And um, from doing visual art uh, standpoint, that's really helpful. It's, so cool um, it yeah, that is cool. it's a really helpful concept to get your head around at a young age. And it's also just fun to do. We do um, something with the outlines. Yes. So I was going to show you. So, um, and this is how we did it when my son was young. This was one of the main things that my son and I played with when he was really little. We used to play with this forever because I love tangrams. Um, you can actually prove the Pythagorean theorem with the tangrams, oh, um, which I'm not sure I can remember how to do, but it's true. Um, but you can, um, so when they're very, very young, using these patterns that have lines in them help them and they have to figure out how to turn the shape to get it to fit in there. But as soon as they get good at that, you can switch it up and you give them a shape and they have to figure out how to put pieces to make that shape, which gets significantly harder. Um, 
There are some kind of mini difficulty ones where some of the pieces have lines and then some of the other ones don't have lines that are like junior level. So there's starter, there's junior, which gives you a couple hints, and then there's expert level, which are really hard. And the cool thing about Tangrams is with just these seven pieces, there are thousands of puzzles that you can make. Um, but this is another thing that my son and I used to love to do. We had a really beautiful wooden set when he was little, and we probably still have it somewhere. But he would bring it in the kitchen while I was cooking or whatever, and he would start to set them up like blocks or make his own pictures, mm -hmm. and he would create all of his own kind of pictures and then tell me what they were and stuff without even doing That's the puzzles. Yeah. So I really like that. I like that both sides are magnetic, so you don't have the frustration factor of like, why would it stick, Mom? Why would it stick? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's super great that they're magnetic because it's like extra hypnotizing almost for young kids. <laughs> when we would have, um, occasionally, if there was a kid who was having trouble with the rest of the group, this is a great like cool down activity or an activity for if they're just a little tired and don't need some time to. It's the um, calm down corner yeah. activity. Just, yeah. Just, for sure. Yeah. So this is kind of an entry level of um, a little bit of, I don't know, they told me I'm not allowed to say left brain and right brain because it's not apparently true. not a thing that's true. Um, but a little bit between the kind of logical yep. puzzle aspect and the creative um, imagination, um, picture -y type art um, elements. Yeah. Yes. So that's uh, Tango's Junior. Tango's Junior. Super cool. All right, I'm going to talk about Color It, which is from one of my favorite game companies for kids. It's Papa. I love them. Um, you can't beat their stuff. It's they're just great. This one is a game that I have used in my house as the perfect like post dinner, uh, getting ready to go to bed game because it is extremely calm. Um, it is a coloring game, and it's a roll and write for kids. If you're not familiar with roll and writes, this is sort of like the I guess the trending it's the hot thing in board like games the in the in last games right now. It's like 12 months yeah. maybe. So you'll roll a dice and then you write something on a piece of paper. Roll and write. Pretty easy. And you count, You get these four sets of paper um, with different patterns on them. You can also print out additional pictures on Haba's website. So you could play like with friends uh, via Zoom or you know just if you get bored of these pictures. Uh, there are two levels. There are the beginner levels and the advanced levels which I'll talk about in a second. And this game comes with everything you need. I'm not going to get all of them out, but there's like a whole little box of colored pencils here, um, which is great. So you don't have to run around your house finding everyone having matching colored pencils. So the way this works is for the beginner level, you're only going to use two dice. You roll them and you get a number and a color. And so, for example, on this house here, which might be kind of hard to see, I got a one in blue. So I could color this one space here blue. Uh, and then whoever finishes coloring in their house first is the winner. For the advanced level, you add a second set of dice, so you now have a choice to make. And each of these has to be the same color, so the whole flower has to be blue or orange or whatever color you choose. And then each uh, different row of the rainbow has to be the same color. Are those all sideways? Some of this one is sideways. Or this one is sideways. Oh, that one now is upside down. Yeah, yeah same down. You know I'm not good with positions on the uh, <laughs> thing. So that is color it. I just love this. So in the advanced mode, you have to be able to like if you start this as red, it has you to have to be, be able to do a two red and a one red, and so you have to think a little bit about oh where am you I going to put plan. this one? Okay, that's I mean, cool. You can also use these sheets to play the basic game as well. It'll just take a little bit longer. Um, again, like the perfect calm down before bed activity, and just like really lovely, and you get an adorable picture at the end of it that you could you know maybe send to grandma or grandpa. I it's think that nice. my son would have liked coloring that way. I think yeah. it makes it makes coloring game school. Yeah, a little bit. Yep. It does it's make... gamifying coloring, mm -hmm. which um my son hated to color. So that yeah, my have... daughter doesn't like coloring. Yeah, either. it would have been a great way because I mean he would get frustrated when he went to preschool and you know pre K because they would want him to color and he didn't like to color. Yeah. And so this would have been a really fun way to get him to do it. Yeah, it is fun. And especially if like, you know, mom and dad or brother and sister or whoever are doing it with you. Yeah, yeah that's fun. And hey, Terrence, the game ends, which is great. Like, <laughs> you're not going to be playing this game forever. You will eventually finish the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's always a plus. 
Um, okay, so what is next on our um, age bracket? Let's see, next on our list is Professor Noggin. Ah. I love Professor Noggin's games, and I think they make are fantastic for um, game schooling. We uh, have used many, many, many Professor Noggin's games as our basis for game schooling. They are basically card game trivia games, and there's a ton of different uh, subject matters that, uh, that are handled. This one is art. Um, the thing that I love about this, and if, if she's holding it up and you can see it, um, it has cards in it um, that, can, I don't know if you can see them, that have easy questions and hard questions. Um, so it actually, we used it a lot when David was starting to learn to read. Mm -hmm. Um, so some of the questions are, let's see if there's anybody out there watching, um, painters during the Renaissance avoided religious themes, true or false. And so if you want to answer, you can, um, or <laughs> what does Renaissance mean in French, modern rebirth or servitude? Those are some of the easy questions. And then advanced questions are like, what best describes the late Renaissance period? Uh, Thauvism, mannerism, pointillism, or tonalism? And so they get pretty advanced and pretty hard. And that's what I always loved about them because David could ask me the hard questions and I could ask him yeah. the easy questions. Or if it was a subject matter that he knew really, really well, I could answer, ask him the um, hard questions so you can kind of go back and forth. But we also take these to restaurants and in the car all the time. Mm -hmm. One of the things that David used to love to do is anytime we went in the car, he would read us the questions and Keith and I would battle it out. And he <laughs> thought it was hilarious. He loved it. But he was reading and he was learning stuff, even though he wasn't answering the questions. He was learning the reading skills and all of that. But this is a great one for teaching kind of art history and a bunch of different things about art. That's cool. And is this something, so something I like to do with all sorts of like card based trivia games, if I like to hole punch the corner and then stick a binder ring through them so I don't have cards everywhere. Is this something I could do that with? You or could possibly do that. You're supposed to win the card if you answer it correctly. And then you get points based on how many cards you get. There's um, a Professor Noggins like question that you get extra things mm -hmm. for. But um, basically, you roll a die, mm -hmm. and that die will tell you one, two, or three, and then you can say easy or hard, and then that's the question that okay. you read, and you're supposed to get the card. But I would think that you could definitely do that for the car or something like that, especially if somebody's just reading questions out to the other person. Me? Yeah, so that's fun. And they've got the full art notable works and stuff yeah i like the front yeah. sometimes has to do with what the card is it'll usually tell you like a general category for the questions on that card but it doesn't always directly apply but the art on the on the front of the card is always really pretty and interesting and neat that's cool lots of like good things it. to talk about it's a great series they do other subjects too but we just happen to have the art one out yeah, well, because today is art. It's art day. <laughs> it's art day. So that's what we're talking about. I love that's... art day. Art day is great. Yep. All right, so we have options for the next one. Um, we can talk about pictures, Hughes and Clues, or fake artist goes to New York. Well, considering Hughes and Clues is out, we should probably do that one. That's fine by me. Yeah, let's do Hughes and Clues. So the board that you're seeing on the screen is Hughes and Clues. And isn't it pretty? I love <laughs> this game. Um, this is one of my new favorite games. I like. I love this game. It's awesome. It's fun. Um, are we gonna play one round? I think, I think so, we but should. we should probably tell people about it first. Okay. Do you want to tell I people about it? Okay. So Hughes and Clues is a relatively new game, if I recall correctly. Where yes, you are, I think it came out this year. Okay. You are trying to get the other players in the game to guess one of these very specific colors on this board. Um, by giving one or two word clues that are not saying, hey, it's in the left-hand side of the board. So you might give the clue apple if you're trying to get them to red, or dandelion if they're trying to get them to yellow. Um, some people are notably better at this than others, but <laughs> um, you score points for being correct. I like it that you can still score a lot of points even if you are not exactly 100% on the right square. Um, and I also like that you have to pick a different square from everyone else. So you, you're not all just like, I put it here because, you know, Susie Jane put it there. Yeah. I think one of the things that I like about this, and it would be really interesting, I'd love to test this out, I haven't yet, 
is I have read on a bunch of board game um, chats that uh, colorblind people can actually play this because it's what it's what your interpretation mm. of that color is. Mm. So I think that's really kind of fascinating. So you, um, when you're giving the clue, the people who are guessing not only have to look at the colors and see what they think of, but it's really about your perception of the way colors work, which I think right. is just a fascinating conversation to have with um, with people, kids or otherwise. Yeah. Yep. So who's going? I'm going to go first. Cause You're going to go first? Well, I have the pile of cards in front of me. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need my little thing. You need your... So the way you do this, and Melissa can show you an example of a card, um, is... You okay, need to one leave up there for the points. Kathleen, don't look at your screen. Okay, I'm not looking at my screen. Well, you could show them one card that's not. Okay, so I'll do that. I don't really like this one as much anyway. All right, okay. so this is an example of the back side of a card. You were given. Are we frozen? On that one, yes. But yeah. I'm, I'm oh, okay. Okay. Um, you're given four choices of color. They give you both a picture of what the color looks like, and then they also give you the coordinates for those color, and then you pick one that you want other people to guess. And I'm not going to use this one because Kathleen was looking at it. I didn't look. I don't want to use that one anymore. <laughs> I don't like that one. I like this one better. I All still right. feel like we're frozen, but maybe not. We're not frozen. We're not oh, frozen. Okay. It's just frozen on your end. Um, oh, dear. I'm going to go with eggplant. Eggplant? Okay. Eggplant. Do you want to go first, Rich, or do sure. you want me to go first? Sure. So now I've got to figure out which is the most eggplant in hue from that hue. So I'll just say maybe this is eggplant. Oh, that seems dark for eggplant to me. Huh. I feel like... I feel like this is a game where I'm going to give lots of clues. Eggplant is... Maybe here? Okay. Maybe? Okay, now she sees what we have chosen. Mm. Except for maybe you can't see what we've chosen because it might be off the board. You can see. They're over there. Oh, okay. They're kind of hard to see, but you can see them. Okay. And then, um, and now she can give us another, she can if she wants to give us another clue. Or if she doesn't want to give us another clue, maybe we just put these out there. Or she can um, give us a two-word clue. It's important you're not allowed to give clues that are common uh, colors. So you can't say red, but you could say, say ruby. Ruby, yeah, or yeah, periwinkle, or but you can't say blue. Um, you can, uh, and you can't make any reference to where it is on the board. So I couldn't say you're close or too far away. Yeah, yeah. Um, or in the middle, like or someone, someone did. did earlier, Jeter. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to say, uh, um, mm, unripe raspberry. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll put mine over there. <laughs> <laughs> just, um, to, just to be <laughs> unripe raspberry. Okay, so where does All it right, go? So now it goes. Kathleen's good at this game. It was C23. I think it oops, this is actually this one. Oh no. So I get one point. You get one point. And so you get one point. Right? I get one point. No, because I'm not inside. Oh, because you're not inside. That's yes. right. You get one. So the, the way the scoring works in this game is that anyone who is immediately outside the scoring cube is, gets one point. Anyone who is inside the scoring square gets two points, and anybody who perfectly guesses the color gets three points. Um, and then the person who's giving the clues gets um, one point for every single thing inside yeah. the scoring cube. Yeah, so correct. that is how Hughes and Clues is played, and I want to play all the time. I really love this game. Yeah. I think it's super fun. Card? Yeah, let's do a whole round. Okay, let's do okay. another round. Okay. Okay. Let's see how Rich does. Not, probably not very well. We'll see. I had a problem because it's kind of dark in here and the it colors is. look different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll say um, denim. Denim. Okay. I get to go first. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, denim. Huh. Ooh. I'm going to say Fair. I think Fair. That's bleached mm -hmm. denim. <laughs> <laughs> so then my second clue is going to be uh, more distressed. <laughs> okay. More distressed. Okay. So then I had K23 was my color. So K23 is that? Ooh. Mm -hmm. K, no. Oh, no. Right there. Right there. Ooh, oh, you man, you did good. K23. So we both get two points and you get two points. I Nicely like done. Yeah, it's really awesome. I love this game. I think this is a fantastic game. Yeah. But anyway, so, oh, and I get to go now. It's mm -hmm. true. Okay. You get to be the hint giver. Okay. And you could totally play this via Zoom. It wouldn't be, like, super easy, but it's not that easy to begin with. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, don't look at my no. colors. <laughs> the ceiling is lovely. Mm -hmm. I think the ceiling is represented not on this board because our ceiling's kind of white. <laughs> um. Okay. We're waiting. I'm gonna say key lime. Ooh, the best of pies. Oh, that's mm. what two words. No. Uh, it's soft root. It's okay. I'll just say lime, <laughs> but the lime is kind of a color. Yeah. But as in the fruit. Okay. <laughs> From which we get the color. Uh. This is fine. This is fine. Kathleen's cheating. Okay, I'm cheating. Apparently. Wait, you should probably go first because I can only go first after a couple points. Ooh. I will go here. Um, I really want key lime pie. I know. I would say <sighs> sherbet. Okay, so then lime sherbet. Maybe more that color. Okay, and the correct answer is L thirteen. Oh. oh. So it's over here? Here's oh, L. Oh, 13. 13. Oh, okay. So. You get two. I get two. Rich gets two. I get three. three. Oh, because I've got one so, next to it. Yep. Look at me. Yeah. Well, as much as So, I except for me cheating um, <laughs> with the two words and then the color, I'm not sure lime is like. I, I mean, it says no... Lime I'm okay with. I think it was key lime was the problem. Yeah, I think my double. But it reminded me exactly of, like, key lime pie. No, no, stop. No, I want key lime pie. <laughs> or, like, frozen key lime pie on a stick. That's really good, too. Yeah. I, that was way too many words, though. I know, but I really <laughs> like frozen key lime pie on a stick. But anyway, that's Hughes and Clues, and I think it's a beautiful um, way to talk about the spectrum with kids, different colors, what colors represent things. I think you could probably play it with pretty young kids. Yeah. Um, there's nothing on the card that they have to know. Um, so you could definitely do, like, what do you think this reminds you of? Well, and the um, rule book actually says if you're playing with younger kids, you just let them pick one and have them, like, write it down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So I really like that. Yeah, it's fun. Do you want to talk about telestrations and fake artists while I set up pictures? Oh, I can. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk about telestrations first because it will help us explain the artists. Yes, of course. So, um, I would imagine a lot of people out there know what telestrations is. Um, yeah. It's like a cross between telephone and Pictionary where um, someone's, you're, everyone's going to start off with a clue uh, after we roll the die. And uh, <clears throat> you'll have some random clue that you have to draw down so maybe you're trying to draw down a christmas tree or maybe you're trying to draw down uh, a chimney 
or I don't know why I'm going there. Um, <laughs> Thinking about ha- Christmas already? Are on my mind. <laughs> uh, but um, whatever you draw down is hopefully going to be decipherable to the next person who will then only get to see your image. They won't get to see your clue. Just So in telephone, uh, they're going to write down what they thought they saw and then pass it to the next person. And based off the new clue, that chimney that you were so certain was a chimney looked like a snail to them. So they wrote down snail. Now the next person is trying to draw a snail. And it gets very silly very quickly. It's a really fun party game. And it's just a really great excuse to sit down and start doodling. Um, which, you know, I don't need many excuses for that. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I think, so a couple things about telestrations to me. I It's absolutely hilarious. I do not find it to be a game. I find it to be more of an activity. Yes. Um, there is some obtuse scoring aspect to it, but it's actually more fun if you don't get any points because it's really, really funny when the um, the pathway goes horribly awry and it's pretty hilarious. But I think that it is incredibly useful in a game schooling situation. But also, I love this game as a um, kind of icebreaker. It is a fantastic icebreaker. It has cards in it that you're supposed to start with to get a word that you're either writing or drawing or whatever. But in I've used it a lot in corporate team building situations where we come up with our own words. Um, for example, I did a corporate team building with a whole bunch of teachers one time, and I... Um, I said, instead of doing anything else, tell us what your favorite part of the summer was. It was going back to school. And, you know, one person like wrote beach and another person wrote, you know, something else like kids or whatever. And then that went around, which was really cool because you got to see what everybody was thinking and doing. But then at the end, when it got back to the original person, they're like, oh, well, my actual word was (laughs) beach. And, you know, it became a keyboard or whatever. Um, and so I think that's just a fantastic thing to do with illustrations. Yeah, that's it's fun. a really great social game. And Fake Artist, uh, oh, yes. is, fake artist. is similar in that you're going to need a couple people this to play. You need at least, I think, five players for Fake Artist. And illustrations you need uh, a four. A, I, four. I think at least yeah. four. Yeah, at least yeah four. both artists, of these need more people. Fake Artist is five and illustrations is four. But they're still great games. Um, and... They're just really, really fun, kind of like break activities where we get to start drawing. What makes Fake Artists stand apart is that um, one person is setting aside and they're acting as the clue giver and they'll give us a category of thing that we're going to be drawing as a team. We'll all be drawing the same image and each of us will have a different color marker to add to that image. Um, So I might say to um, Kathleen and Melissa that we're drawing a vehicle right and then i'll pass out the specific vehicle that we're drawing on a little card that i've written down um and so when uh, melissa gets her card she'll see that the vehicle we're drawing is a blimp um and she'll start making marks to help complete the blimp but she doesn't want to be too obvious because someone around the table in this case kathleen got an x (laughs) on her card so she just knows that we're drawing a vehicle she doesn't know that it's supposed to be a blimp but she's trying to make marks that the rest of the group sees um that makes them think oh well she knows what we're drawing and it's great because it leads it's an excuse to sort of argue with your friends lightheartedly and be like oh you're definitely you have no idea what we're doing you're the fake artist <laughs> right. and does um, everything you need come in that box it does yeah so it's a very tiny tiny box um but it's got these um little markers here and then a bunch of dry erase cards that you hand out and the dry erase cards match the colors of the markers so you can keep track of who around the table is making all the pink marks or who around the table is making all the green marks and then one person uh, each round gets to stand aside and they will get points if they manage to give a good enough hint that the fake artist is able to you know sort of suss it out as people are drawing so the, the person who's giving all those clues in this case in the example of me i would get points if kathleen figured it out um so it's just a really great uh you know party game that you can take anywhere with you um and it's uh just really fun to start drawing something and then oh okay now the next person's going to add to that picture 
Yeah, it's cooperative drawing. My dad and I used to do that when I was little. He would make a line and I would have to finish the drawing or whatever. Yeah. It always reminds me of that game. That's what I did yeah, passing notes true. like in high school. Yeah. <laughs> you were supposed to be doing your schoolwork, Melissa. <laughs> I got excellent grades in high school. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was obviously fine. I think that we should talk about Upside Drawn and Dixit and then we can play this game. Okay, sure. cool. Um, so I have not played Upside Drawn draw do y'all know how to do it it is a twist it is a twist, twist on illustrations yeah to uh, really stretch your brain power right so you have to draw the image i believe from upside down no you are drawing it um so instead of like me drawing with a pencil rich will be holding my pen and i am moving the paper um so i get to tell him up and down and that is it and then i have to draw my image that way oh my gosh yeah and then i by moving the paper so that that's just like, hurts my brain yeah too. it hurts my brain too <laughs> But I haven't had a chance to play this one yet because it needs it needs a lot of people. It needs and it's a lot of new. people, and it, we can't see people, and it's new. Yeah, yeah. so but it, it came fun. out pretty recently. I think it would be an awesome holiday game mm -hmm. um, for like friends and family and stuff. It looks really fun, and I love illustrations so much that um, it looks very cool. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah, it looks super fun. Yeah. Okay, and then Dixit, which we've talked about before. We have talked things. about Dixit before. But um, in this circumstance, we're going to talk about it just because the art in Dixit is absolutely gorgeous. And I love this to um, have the beautiful art to use for storytelling. But I think it's also a really good way to do kind of um, art theory or like the talk about like the, the different elements in a picture and the composition of pictures and different things like that. You can use this art a lot in a lot of different ways. Yeah, or even things like, you know, why, let's give clues that are feelings today instead of saying, like, ocean or something like that. Yeah. If you can just mix it up. Yeah, both of those points are super key. Like, it's really great to have a way for um, kids who might not um, always want to volunteer what they think about something. The game gives you a great avenue to be like, this is... Um, this makes me feel sad or this, you know, this is a, a journey. This means this to me. Mm -hmm. And just by playing the game, you're, you're ascribing all these, you know, traits to the art itself. Yeah, I love it. But that's, so we thought we should at least show up fix it a little bit. All right. And last, but certainly not least, and what I'm most excited about is pictures. This is going to be a wonderful mess. It is going to be a wonderful, glorious mess. So this game... Um, I think it kind of flew under our radar a little bit until it won all sorts of prizes. Um, and we got it in the store and COVID happened and we hadn't had a chance to play it, but then we played it and guys, it's awesome. Um, it is so fabulous and creative and wonderful. So in this game, we have all of these pictures here. You have, I think, a deck of like almost a hundred cards. So you have lots of variety and they're all photographs um, as far as I can tell. Um, so there's one like this sort of, you know, generic sort of stock photography. Very nice. Um, and then each player is given a random assortment of stuff. So, for example, I have, let's see, sticks and rocks. So this is what I have. Kathleen has cubes and I a little have frame. Different colored cubes. Oops. And Rich has cards with pictures on them. Oh, no. So we're going to use our objects to each um, try and recreate one of the images in these pictures and we're each going to have a different one so we're going to draw that randomly from the bag so i'm going to start doing that and then i'm going to pass the bag so don't tell anyone so you look at it you figure out you'll get a coordinate you'll go to that coordinate and then it goes face down in front of you i, I know which picture is mine great and then we use our various art materials in order to structure that picture. When it comes to scoring, we actually have little score cards, which I think are still in the box. Um, so we can mark down our guesses as to what we think each person's picture is. If you guess correctly, both you and the person who made the image get, I think, one point. One of them might get two points. Um, and that's pretty much how the game goes. And then you switch materials in the next round. So every, And the game ends when everyone has a chance with all of the different things. And we'll show them all to you, so don't worry. Um, so the other ones are sort of, they almost look like kids' blocks to me. And then the last one is a uh, strings, shoelaces. I've seen some people get really creative with the shoelaces. Mm -hmm. um. And there aren't too many specific rules. I know with the cubes, you they have to fit in that frame. And then with the cards, you can only use two to five of them. 
two to five. Only two to five for your picture. Okay. Okay, I have finished mine. Can anybody see mine? Can you all see mine? Yeah, I can see it, but not up close. Mm -hmm. If I put mine over here, you can sort of see it. Okay. Hey, Legends DM, how are you? Have you played pictures yet? It's really cool. It once built a Jarus this year. And it's amazing. And uh, we opened it a couple like a couple weeks ago when we were doing the sidewalk sale and we were playing with people out on the street because really most people don't have to touch anything. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was fantastic. Um, I wonder, Oops. can I take a picture and post it in? I wonder, I can't post I, things. I don't think pictures. you can post pictures in chat. That would be oh, really man. bad. I'm glad that's not a thing. I know, but it would be so nice. <laughs> That I could take a picture of my beautiful thing. You could post it on Facebook later. I could. Okay. What is Rich doing? Rich is doing. I don't know. Rich is going over on my side. Well, I didn't have space in front of me, so. Uh huh. I'm sharing. Okay, I've got to figure out what Rich's thing is. Huh. I have a guess for Rich. I have a guess for Kathleen. I also have a. Yeah. And this is yours. Yes. Kathleen, which is the top of yours? It, like, the, this is the top and this is the bottom. Okay. I have guesses for both. I think I have... Also, so we should mark down where our guesses are. On paper. Yes, on paper. We each need to be paper. Okay. And a pen, probably. Is that helpful to write? Well, I've got a paper here for oh, you. Thank you. And here's your pen. Oh, thank you. I'm really bad at this game. I don't know. I feel like you've given a really good clue, but maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I know, but I have no idea what y'all's are. Which is your top? This is my top. And there are little pieces somewhere. Ah, there are little pic uh, it says pictures, so you can like frame it on the bottom. But since we have kind of limited table space there, it's still in the bag right now. <laughs> huh. I don't even understand what y'all did. Fine. Wait. Fine, fine. Let's see. So I write your name down? I just wrote the first letter. I have R, K, and M. <laughs> okay. Uh, yours is... I wonder if we can get a pan across all the clues. I don't know. We could, but I'm, I'm scared. What would we could do that. I, I don't know do that, that I could get the camera back. Went, up because my dog would have returned the way they were. Um, and then I need to figure out riches. I think I don't know. I, riches is not okay. <laughs> I am complete. Okay. Right. Okay. Mine was D four. Yay, Yay! I got that one right. I got that too. Yay! Oh, so I get a point for that. I think. And we get a point. And you get a point. I might get two points. I. Some scoring, I forget. But yeah. it, this is not a game I would necessarily. There's some scoring. Play. There's yeah. some scoring. I don't know. Uh, Rich, what do you? What was yours? Mine was, uh, wait, C one. Yes. Oh. Uh oh. I put B one. I put B two. Mm. Why would it be? I didn't have anything to represent. What is this? This is death the bridge. Bug. Oh, I thought it was death bug. No. Yeah, that's what I thought too. That's why I said B too. I guess I should have done this if I was really thinking. I would have done that. Yeah, I suppose you could do that. Um, because then I would have a car down there and a sky up there. Mm. All right, uh, Kathleen, which is okay. yours? Mine was um, C three. Yes, you get a point, and I get a point. Yay! Nice. What did you get for me? I guessed C three for yours. Yay! So you're better at this than you think. Well, no, I'm good at the clue giving. I'm not good at the guessing. I never would have guessed that one in a billion years. All right, so now I, we rotate our materials. Yeah. But anyway. Should we do another round? Uh, we can do one more round, I guess. I don't know if anybody can see what we're doing. <laughs> that's true. Um, but Why anyway, we... that's the general idea of it. Yeah, it's super fun. Um, yeah. 
this is really creative and these materials are like really nice like these are not cheap poorly manufactured things they are solid and they make me very happy like these blocks would be indistinguishable from kids blocks which might be dangerous if you lock little kids in your house it's true yeah. It is true. Yeah, yeah um, it is nice that it gives you so many different ways of mm -hmm. trying to express the idea. I mean, you could also, I could even see, like, you taking this to the next level and making your own materials for it. Like, there's no reason you couldn't do that. It would yeah. be really fun. That like, would be really fun. Be, like, you could videos. also use um, pictures from your own pictures, which yeah. would be really, really oh, fun. Oh, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be neat. Or it would cause fights at Thanksgiving, but, you know. <laughs> like, look, I made grandma. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah for sure so um so that is art yeah. for uh labyrinth yeah. yeah and uh is there anything else i mean i think the biggest thing with different games that incorporate art and um photos and drawing and all of that kind of stuff it's important to think that there's more than just pictionary yep um mm -hmm. which i think is great yeah. uh there's also, and we didn't include all of them today because we didn't think we had enough time, but um, there's a lot of board games about art. There's a card game called Modern Art. Mm -hmm. the there gallerist. is the Gallerist, the gallerist which, is, which is way, way, way too hard to play with most children. Yes, don't play that with children. Yeah, maybe high schoolers, I guess. Um, I would say game school, game severe gamer high schoolers right. could possibly play the Gallerist, but it's fantastic. You're actually playing like you run a muse art museum it's really awesome but it's a Vito Lasalle or Lacerda game mm -hmm. and very very long and hard um but one of my favorite games and I don't know if it's even still in print it didn't ever sell very well but I absolutely loved it was called Pastiche and mm. Pastiche won the Mensa Select Award several long time ago but it is a game that you laid tiles down to mix colors and you got colors um like little patches of colors to that you could then spend for masterwork art and like all the art was out and so you were basically tile laying of mixing colors to make these different colors to um make the paintings and it that's was cool. i loved it it was one of my favorites but nobody would ever play it with me yeah. so i miss I atelier as well oh yeah atelier is another one um, there's a lot of really cool games about art. And there's a lot of great games with just, like, fabulous art oh, there <laughs> as well. Like, What's your favorite art of any game? I really like the art in Dixit. I like the art in Dixit, but ignoring Dixit. Okay, or something like that, just, uh, Detective Club or something. Um... Maybe Wingspan. Yeah, I was gonna say Wingspan, even though we chat that out all the time. I also, I love Beth Sobel. Yeah. Um, I don't get to play a ton of her games very often, so I tend to like heavier stuff. But did you see that she liked David's cat picture? <gasps> I posted it That's on Twitter. Cool. So Beth Sobel is one of the best artists of it's all time beautiful. for board games that does board game art. Um, she worked on Wingspan. She worked on um this new game that just came out called Calico, which is kind of an artsy game. It's all about patterns on a quilt. Um. But you're trying to make the coolest quilt to attract all the cats. Um, it's, it's like my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she does really gorgeous art. And the cover of Calico is an orange tabby cat, not a Calico cat. It's a long story. but um, And it looks exactly like my son's new cat. And there was a picture that I posted on Twitter. So you should go look at it because it's really cute. And she retweeted it the other day. Oh, which that's nice. Yeah. Nice. Love that yeah. Um, but anyway, I guess we can end a little bit early tonight. Well, we have to talk about tomorrow, and we have to talk about next week. Oh, that's true. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm excited because we get to play Horrified. Oh yes, Horrified. Yes. Tomorrow on Thursday night, board game night, we're playing Horrified, which is another cooperative game. So, so no team staff, team Kathleen. I mean, you should always be on team staff, but okay. Yeah, but apparently, hopefully, we won't die this time. It'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. Um, and then next week on ABCs and 123s, we are planning on focusing on games for the preschool crowd. Ooh, preschool games. Yeah, because yes. we kind of neglect them sometimes. They can't really 